This is Wicked Roadie, a wicked good podcast about Rhode Island events and life. Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. Thanks so much for joining and tuning into the podcast Roaded Best of Rhode Island by the readers of Rhode Island Monthly, your place for fun things happening in and around the ocean state. Pandemic or not, mm-hmm. we've got you covered here. Uh, Mary, how is everything going over in the west side of the state, <laughs> seeing that I'm in the East Bay here? West side's doing pretty well. Okay. Um, you know, just the foliage is looking great. My kids, we've got this gorgeous maple tree in my backyard, and they're really looking forward to Halloween because we have figured out that the week of Halloween, our entire tree is orange and red. So there's still a lot of green in it, uh, but it's a great way. You know, my kids are only five and seven. So of course we're learning about the calendar and dates and how many days it is between now and Halloween. But to have that nice visual cue, so it's it's pretty cool. It's definitely pretty cool. So yeah, aside from that, things are good. We're looking forward to carving some pumpkins as it gets closer to Halloween. And you, my friend, shared the coolest tip with me about how to properly cut out the pumpkin from below. Yeah, so a lot of people, you know, the traditional way is when you're going to carve a pumpkin, you know, you usually jab the big chef's knife right into the top. And if you're smart, you make a notch, right? You know, you cut around the stem and you make a notch so you always know which way it fits in the right way. Uh, But it's actually better if you cut the bottom of the pumpkin. So if you cut the the bottom part of the pumpkin so you make it so it sits flat you can actually mm-hmm. discard that part of the pumpkin or after you're done you could just you know sit it on top of that but what happens is is it makes the pumpkin last longer so how, why does it make it last longer so the stem although it's quote unquote dead as as it goes down into the pumpkin it, there's still nutrients there's still you know uh you know whatever it is you know chemicals in that that mm-hmm. help sustain uh, the pumpkin and keep it alive when you cut that off uh, you know when you make that cut it essentially severs that from the stem and it just uh, it's it's along the same lines of if you cut an onion yeah and if you cut the roots off right away the onion will be very watery you'll get it'll start it'll start you know the juices will come out however if you cut the onion and you leave the root uh, attached as, mo- as long as possible like you'd make all your cuts and then you do that last final cut to cut the root off then all the juices then you won't cry as much so I had no idea about that either <laughs> well you know that's what we're here for at wicked roadie it's tips on cutting onions pumpkins and what you can do uh with your life so yes yeah, so that's the other thing and and plus if you want to put a light Uh, I don't suggest a candle. I suggest using like a little battery powered light. But Mm -hmm. if you do use a candle, at least now you're sitting it on a level surface, that being the front steps or on a plate with a little bit of water in it or something. Yeah, just just, uh, yeah. So that's the uh, so leave the stem intact. It looks cool. It looks good, too. You know, obviously, when you leave the stem intact, it it looks, you know, you don't notice the bottom being kind of kind of lopped off and just, you know, (laughs) you're you're only talking an inch or so. So, yeah. uh, Oh, well, speaking of pumpkin carving, of course, you know, one of the big things every single year is the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular at Roger Roger Williams Park Zoo. And I know, Ben, you were able to go... It is spectacular. It (laughs) It is spectacular indeed. This year you're driving through. It's not the typical walking because of the COVID and social distancing. You're actually driving through the zoo. It's like it's like being on safari in Africa, which I've done never. (laughs) I was picturing Jurassic Park, you know, like you're in the Jeep and you drive by the dinosaurs until they start to attack you. But yeah, this is, you know, whether you're able to go in the car and have this really cool different experience. um, But if you are not heading on over to the zoo, or maybe you'd like to do something a little extra. There's this really cool event that I wanted to make sure people knew about. It's happening Sunday from 7 to 9. It's a jack-o'-lantern spectacular carve with the master's class. So, of course, Ben, I mean, you and I have both gotten to meet some of these master carvers through our different activities, and they are going to be sharing... Some amazing tips these artists will actually give you. So part of, it is a ticketed event. You need to purchase it. Um, we'll have the information on our website. But basically, you're going to get a pumpkin, a 10-piece pumpkin carving toolkit. And let me tell you, this isn't like something you get at the dollar store. I was checking it out. These are legitimate tools that you will be able to use every single year for sure. your pumpkin carving needs. Um, they've been customized and sharpened by the professional carver. So it's pretty wow. much like you get to be 
the artist at Jacqueline and Spectacular. So the pumpkin uh, design is going to be a red panda, and it's going to give you access to this virtual class. Um, they're going to teach you everything. There's going to be a cool reusable tote bag, the hand pimp. A uh, pan picked pumpkin. They're going to give you the light bulbs and an extension cord Whoa. and uh, a biodegradable tablecloth protector and a fine point sharpie. Like, literally, everything you need is going to be included in this bag for you to have an exceptionally carved pumpkin. So, they are suggesting that, um, you know, it's ages 13 plus just because you're using sharp tools, of sure. course. You get to keep the tools. Yeah, you get to keep them. So that's this way you know what you're doing for years to come. Yeah, that's very handy, too. And if it's not the Halloween season and for some reason your appendix ruptures, Ooh. no need to call 911, ladies and gentlemen. You just uh, break <laughs> out that biodegradable uh, tablecloth, you know, sterilize the tools, maybe, you know, run them onto hot water or, or just kind of uh, hit them with the iodine and you can perform your own... Uh, you know, y- 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 abendectomy. <laughs> It'd be great. You can just, uh, it's its good for you. Uh, oh, it sounds so. like a Halloween nightmare. Oh well, my gosh. it's something to do. I mean, <laughs> people are looking to save a little money, have a little fun these days. That's what we provide to you. Uh, this portion of the broadcast is not supported by the American Doctors Association, the yeah. ADA, uh, <laughs> or whatever. It's brought to you by me, who has ADHD. So there you go. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Um, what should we uh so we got the um we got the carve the masters things which yeah. is great and that's that's all with the zoo that's all with that whole thing yes. there if you haven't been to the zoo yet ladies and gentlemen uh time is running out mm. it has been very popular but you have to buy tickets in advance back in the day you know before covid you could just show up and and you know, carefree, stand in the line forever, make some friends and go through. This is where this is a time where you have to make a reservation, timed entry, car loads, the whole nine yards. Mm-hmm. And trust me, it is well worth it. But the time is running out. There is only two weeks left. It does end on November 1st. So make sure you go over to their website. We'll have the link there uh, to support the zoo because it's like everything else, Mary. The zoo lost so much yes. support because they weren't able to have a traditional Zubilee. They weren't able to have all their usual events. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, they made this work, but they are struggling like so many are. So go help them out. Go check that out. So that's uh, that's my little tip to you. If you're tuned in <laughs> while you're on the road working, getting errands done, just listen and enjoy the episode. If you hear something that piques your interest, you know what to do. Go to the website, wickedroadypodcast.com for all the links and info. <laughs> So kicking things off and wicked fun in the 401, I wanted to let you know about this cool event happening Saturday. It's just from 5 to 6, so a nice short event. It's called the History of Halloween, a brief guided tour, and it's happening on the Providence Pedestrian Bridge, which if you haven't been there... It's really pretty. It's a, it's a cool, you know, bridge and a great view. So basically what's going to happen is this gentleman, Dave Alves, um, he is a new amateur historian and Halloween enthusiast. So he spent the pre the previous decade or so being a musician right here in the New England area. Um, and he actually has a degree, get this, Ben, in Celtic archaeology. He's like the Celtic uh, Indiana Jones. Wow. Right? So this is going to be his first time doing this. He's hoping that it's going to be an annual occurrence. Oh, 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 oh. Archaeology. Yes. Not not architecture. No, no. Because I'm yes. thinking, I'm like, wow, that's, uh, he, he, I brought I in the, Jones. I'm going to redesign the kitchen, but I'm bringing in this specialist. Uh, <laughs> David, would you mind, uh, make this kitchen Celtic, please. Yes. Show me how to yes. boil everything. So this so, event is completely free for how to boil everything. <laughs> probably need a, probably helpful to have a pot filler in that case. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's completely free for all to attend. There, of course, is an option for tips. And I always love to give the plug, of course, that Dave is a musician. Um, so all of our musicians who usually are gigging nowadays are having a bit of difficulty. So basically he is going to tell you where all of the traditions come from and how ghosts and monsters came to rule this holiday. You know, everything, witches, werewolves, pumpkins, fairies, the dead coming to life. All of these different tales are going to be included in the Halloween walkabout and talk about. So once again, it's a short seasonal socially distanced outdoor event and it is completely free. And he's of course recommending that because it's a short event, maybe you go on this little tour and then you go grab dinner at one of the amazing restaurants nearby in Providence. Good stuff. Mary, uh, the food trucks, we always like to talk about our good friends over there, PVD Food Truck Events. 
they've been doing these concerts at Diamond Hill on Saturdays, starting at three o'clock in the oh three thirty rather in the afternoon. Diamond Hill State Park is food trucks and a concert. And, you know, they have great entertainment. They're working harder than ever to support the local food truck community while, you know, keeping everybody safe. So, listen, here's the thing. Uh, You have to wear a mask when you're at this event, Mm -hmm. unless you're eating, obviously, if you're sitting down somewhere. Just just know that if you do try to go anywhere, walk around, they do have staff asking you to do this. I got to hand it to Eric and his crew. They have been executing these events flawlessly, yes. not on wood. People yes. have been doing everything they can to help, you know, keep this this thing going. So that's been good. And the state has really looked at them as an example. They put the signs out. They put the 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 all the all the good stuff uh, as far as the. Uh, uh, the the hand sanitizer yeah, the, oh, yeah. You know, all that all that stuff you need so the they have this weekend it's a band called purple honey will be performing and uh, you can go there enjoy some live music you know we talk about you know the the musicians who are typically gigging some are not nearly enough though yes. i mean they, their calendars have been literally cut and i see musician friends of mine that say, hey, uh, something just fell flu- through. This place can't open because they had some positive cases. So mm-hmm. I'm available, and I'd really like to eat next week. So it's it's one of those kind of things. So uh, you can uh, you can go check this out. It's at Diamond Hill State Park in Cumberland, Rhode Island. It is the Food Truck Concert Nights at Diamond Hill. What do you got? Very cool. Uh, Cockshell Farm, you know, over in your neck of the mm-hmm. woods, over in the East Bay, they're having this event called Phantoms and Fire. Um, and this is going to be taking place not only this Sunday from 5 to 8, but then Sunday, November 1st. So if you already have plans, but you want to make next weekend extra spooky, you can do that. You get to explore this museum after hours. And if you've never been, it's you know, like an old rustic museum, kind of like Sturbridge Village. It's just like from that the olden time periods, they've got all the accessories and the people dress up, but this time you get to go at night. So it's going to be super spooky. There's going to be bats and bonfires, cauldrons and candy, ghosts and guitars, and even a headless horseman. So oh, it is going to be, be very theatrical. Um, you know, they're going to be having some different kind of performances. Um, one that is called Nevermore, of course, Fantastic Terrors of Edgar Allan Poe. And as I said, the headless horseman, he's going to be riding around. So you got to, you know, keep your eyes up for that. So it's just a different take on, you know, doing something spooky. I know so many people go to corn mazes and things like that. And this one just is a bit more historical and mm-hmm. it's just going to be a fun event. So once again, it's taking place this Sunday and also next Sunday at Cogshell Farm from five to eight. All right. Heading over to the west side, as it were, it is the second annual pupper treat at BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. Now, this is being hosted by Operation Possibility Project in association with BJ's Brew House. Delicious, great restaurant. Uh, but they are, this is an idea for you to bring your pup, your four legged friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can wear their costume. You can, the kids can wear their costumes as well. It's free to the public. And, you know, they'll be taking donations uh, to help with the uh, monetary and supplies. Uh, of dog food, dog treats, blankets, and such over there. So this is a it's a different kind of event. They got a giant parking lot over there that you can they just kind of walk through and, and check it out. Uh, so go check it out. It's the second annual Pupper Treat. Of course, throughout this entire pandemic, so many of these organizations, like the zoo, mm-hmm. like the food trucks, like the musicians, everybody we've been talking about, especially the animals, uh, they've been hard hit. So Operation Possibility Project working hard to help keep our four-legged friends happy and healthy. So our Wicked Tasty recommendation this week is Tea's Blanket Brunch. Now, Tea's... Gosh, I'm going to start drooling just thinking about it. There's a several cheese in our in our state, but you know they're definitely known for their brunch. They go all yep. out. My favorite is the ooey gooey French toast. Oh my goodness gracious! They have fantastic beverages, and this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, they are inviting you to enjoy 
the beautiful New England fall with a blanket, Bloody Mary, and a Benedict. So the first 15 people the, who decide to go and sit out on their patio will receive a complimentary blanket and half off Bloody Mary. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you need to be, of course, 21 or over because they're giving you alcohol. But I just love this idea. You know, it is a wee bit brisk in the mornings, but we're hardy New Englanders. You know, we can wear a coat. We can throw on our Ugg boots. We've been wearing them since, you know, September anyway. And then Mm. they give you a little snuggly blanket and a drink that should help warm you up from the inside. So this is happening, of course, um, as I said, both Saturday and Sunday. And as long as you get there and you're one of the first 15 people, you're going to get that cozy blanket and half off Bloody Mary. Now, I've been thinking about the fact that the Snuggie, Mm. as much as many people made fun of them when they first came out, you know, the Snuggie, which is the blanket with sleeves. I have those. those, Of course you do. (laughs) It's Harry Potter themed. (laughs) Naturally. Color me surprised on all of this stuff. I mean, it's, you know. (laughs) <laughs> My word. I like it just uh, so many questions, so little time. <laughs> Folks, subscribe to all the Mary and Blake podcasts. You oh, learn so much about this wonderful family. <laughs> My friends. Um so the Snuggie, uh, you know, you could you could be you could have that out there. Yeah. Uh at these different uh, events because you know, you got your sleeves and everything. My only concern is because the sleeves aren't tapered. Correct. So you need to you need to get tapered sleeves. So if you reach over for a beverage or something, you're not knocking something. Just maybe get an elastic. You know, pop the elastic on. Bada bing, bada boom. You're good to snuggle and eat. It's 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 magical. God, do we need a cure? It's no secret that, you know, we live in the smallest state in the country, and it's also no surprise that Rhode Islanders have the biggest hearts you'll find anywhere. Every day, our family, our friends, people across our communities are giving their time by volunteering. And Mary, that's why we partner with the United Way of Rhode Island. That's right. Well, especially now during these unpredictable times, it's more important than ever to lend a helping hand if you're able, particularly in support of our most vulnerable neighbors. So please consider the needs of these three local organizations. All right. First up, Dare to Dream Ranch, located in Foster. I've been to this place. It is incredible. It is is really something special. They They offer no cost equine therapy programs for service members, veterans, and their families who experience PTSD, anxiety, and depression. The new volunteers able to assist with fundraising efforts as well as fall ranch cleanups, so you got to be 18 or older to do that. What do you got? Judy's Kindness Kitchen, located in Providence, they're looking for volunteers to help prepare sandwiches on Sunday mornings that will help feed people at both Crossroads and Emanuel House. All ages are welcome, and those who are younger than 16 must be accompanied by an adult. So this is a great opportunity. You know, if you do have kids in your life and you want to teach them about helping other members of the community, uh, this one at Judy's Kitchen, uh, Kindness Kitchen, is a great one to check out. Fantastic. The Empowerment Factory is a Pawtucket based nonprofit dedicated to advancing children's creativity, self esteem, and social emotional skills. They're looking for volunteers to support its social media efforts, as well as virtual interns to help bring arts and programming to youth. So if you want to get involved with the Empowerment Factory, very, very worthy cause over mm-hmm. there. To learn more about the United Way of Rhode Island, or if you're in need of assistance, you can visit their website or simply dial 211 and get connected to the help that you need. Mary, you got to love it when the band knows how long our reads are for Wicked Nice, <laughs> and they end right it on cue. And then it's like they're seamless. They don't even need to switch instruments or or, re, or switch reads or whatever. They get right into the right end in. of show music, folks. I mean, that's the level of professionalism 
and and talent we bring to you here on the Wicked Roadie Podcast. And like we said, everything that we talked about today can be found mm-hmm. on our website, wickedroadiepodcast.com. That's right. And let's be real. A lot of us may not be spending tons of time with our loved ones, but we're spending a lot of time chatting with our loved ones on our phones, maybe snapping pictures and liking and hearting and checking things out. So if you're going to any of these events, please make sure you snap a picture and tag us with the hashtag Wicked Roadie. Even let the people know at that event, hey, I heard about this on this podcast. And for fun, if you're sitting in bed, scrolling mindlessly, search the hashtag Wicked Roadie to see some of the awesome pictures that your local Rhode Islanders have been snapping. If you are looking to get your messages directly into the listeners of various Marion Blake podcasts, then you will be making the best decision for your business I can think of. For example, the other day I was chatting with Blake, mm-hmm. uh, Mary's husband, and they've got this This Is Us 2 podcast, a great title for a show that I'm not allowed to watch. But I find out from your husband that writers of This Is Us yes. not only listen to the show, they've reached out to you guys and said... <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, this is that's that's pretty incredible, and it is. And, and and I I also understand you guys are keeping them in line with uh, some of their <laughs> storyline and plot. Uh, they'll be happy to know I don't I don't I can't watch the show because I'm not allowed in the living room when it's on. But nonetheless, uh, it's uh, that's that's just what you come to expect. So if if you want to get your message out there. Uh, whether you be local, national, international, what have mm-hmm. you, visit maryandblake.com and see what the shows are and then email us at wickedroadypodcast at gmail.com or contact them through their website. That's right. Well, until next time, I'm Mary Larson. And I am Menda Castro. And you've been listening to Wicked Roadie. We'll have more for you next week.